Hi, and welcome to the first edition of Guns, Gear, and Shit. This is just going to be pretty much me talking about shit that I like and what I've done with my own personally owned firearms. I'll be right back. And this is ultimately me trying to give some of you guys some budget ideas that you could do, because... Once upon a time, I didn't have a lot of money. I have more money now, but actually I like to spend money less than when I had no money. Probably why I have more of it. That said, I do love to shoot. I do like to build my own rifles. Not always build. Sometimes I buy an upper. I will change things. But we're going to just jump into this. Uh, and we'll give the caveat. I will never give you legal advice. I hate YouTube experts giving legal advice. I will not name names, but my one experience with that was one of them was going on about how you should never modify anything on a defensive gun, blah, blah, blah. And when I asked him for legal precedent, he told me to look up myself and that I was asking to be spoon-fed because I was fat. This is a YouTuber who is quite chubby, and I liked the fact that he, A, went for the ad hominem attack, and B, that he did the logical fallacy of the reversal of proof. He made the claim... You back it up. If I ever say something about a product or an item and you know I'm wrong, call me on it. Be respectful, I will fully admit I'm wrong. I'll even thank you. Nothing wrong with correcting someone as long as you do it right. Just don't be an asshole. I also apologize for the sound. I, uh, I bought a mic, but it plugs in and it doesn't go far enough. I will probably be buying a remote setup Bluetooth-wise. My bad, boys. I'm new. I don't even know how to video edit, so this is going to look like a fucking barrel full of monkey dicks tossed into a sea full of assholes. Well, let's begin. First and foremost, I'm going to show that the weapon is clear. Try not to bag my little wee doggos here, my chacked pooches. But we're going to start at four and go aft. At the tip, we've got... A Cobra Tack two-piece crank-off brake slash can. Uh, it's two-piece. I can take this little tab out right here, run it as a straight can. I, I run it with the conical brake because it helps with gas pressure and it also really reduces muzzle rise. I mean, it's more of a push with the recoil impulse on a 10.5 with, or even a 7.5. This is an 8 I've got over here. I'll be showing you in a minute, but it is fantastic. Moving on, nothing special. We have an A2 front sight post. I'll probably keep it. Um, this is actually from my first build, this Magpul 4 end. Uh, it's a Delton unit, and I upgraded to a Yankee Hill key mod. It, that, that actual gun is gone now. I traded it with somebody for an AK, and then I got rid of the AK because it was a 74, and ammo was a bitch to find. Thank you, Obama. But overall, I've got very few complaints. I will probably eventually wait for one of the UTG drop-in units to come on sale, and I will... I'm sorry, the dog is trying to stare down the cat. We just got him, and they're still not sure about each other. But I will probably be doing a UTG unit eventually, one of the drop-ins. I don't plan on going stupid, just basic M-lock. Now, the light <clears throat> is a Feachi unit. It's your M-Lock setup. It is 1,200 lumens per their literature. I don't know if it's really 1,200 lumens. I have no way of testing or knowing. Um, it's actually a really fucking awesome unit for what I paid. I'm going to cuss a lot, and I'll be demonetized. I'm not doing this through the money. I'm not even doing a Patreon thing right now. Maybe I will later if I get more views and requests, but I doubt I will because YouTube is oversaturated with gun people. But as I was saying, this Feachi unit is fantastic for what I paid. It is by no means as beefy or well-built as this Alzetta Bravo that I've had. I don't, I don't even know. I've had it for a long time. Bought it when I was in the guard as an infantryman because it looked cool, and I just got a fucking reenlistment bonus, and I went full retard. Everybody who has gotten a reenlistment bonus that's worth his salt has gone a little full retard, and... It's fantastic light, don't get me wrong, but I don't want to spend that much for a light again. Take that back, I probably will eventually pick up one of the Streamlight weapon lights for a hundred bucks, that seems pretty reasonable. 
I've used the cool Surefire IR, IR units in conjunction with the PEC-15, and fuck, that's cool, but you go price that out, fucking Jimbo. As I was saying, though, before we get too much in the weeds, the mount is really nice. It's configurable. I can take this off of here, this off of here. I can flip it. I'm running it right here. It does come with a remote tail switch and two rechargeable batteries. It's very bright. I'm not going to point it at the camera and be a dick, but it, it works fucking great. I love it. It is... So I don't know if it's 1,200 lumens. It's supposed to go out to 200 yards. I, I'm going to go to my dad's farm and test that. I live in a 50-meter world here in the city. So I have no way of knowing. I really don't want to go fucking stand on the street with a fucking rifle or even a regular flashlight and just point it down the street. It's kind of a shit heel move. But overall, I am highly impressed, and I don't use the remote unit. I usually run my hand up here anyway, and boom. It is very bright. I love it. Moving on, you have your standard delta ring, which nobody gives a shit about. The Optic is a Lucid Arms unit that I picked up for 90 bucks. It's the HD7 Gen 3. I would not buy the unit new for 200 bucks. Uh, it's just not worth it because there are other optics that offer better features for even less money. The Romeo 5, I believe, or is it the Romeo 4? I'm not a SIG optic guy, so I could be wrong. Correct me. Um, Holosuns. They have some great Holosun units that I've owned. My dad's got one. You can get those for under 200 bones. Um, you can get the North Tac Ronin for 90 bucks, and that's fantastic for what it is. I don't have one. friend has one in one of his rifles, and really, there's just too many good options for me to want to buy this new in box. But that said, it is nice. It's got a little string on the curates, but of course it's not attached to anything, because why would you want to do that? It has four reticles you can set like this. It's a little mushy, but, you know, I usually just leave it on the EOTech circle dot style reticle because it really is like my go-to for any type of CQB application. Uh, on off, up down, it's all push button. There are multiple settings. You can set it to where it will like detect the light with this little gimbal up here. I don't care for it. I've had it wash out outside sometimes with that. They get a cloud will roll over. Uh, but it'll be really bright at what I'm pointing at farther away, and suddenly I can't see the dot, so not for me. Um, I mainly got it because it came with all the fucking fixings. Um, 2X magnifier that screw on, screw off. It's actually really clear and has a lot of generous eye relief. Real narrow fucking box, don't get me wrong, but honestly, it comes right to the eye for me. It's a lower third co-witness, which also is a big selling point. Uh, it uses AAA batteries. I'm currently running a lithium-ion unit. Rechargeable, do not run alkaline, or it will void the warranty, or so they say. The rear sight is a dagger defense unit. I wanted to try them out. Um, I've owned mag poles for most of my backups, but I've seen some great reviews. It's one of the best-reviewed sites on Amazon, and yeah, for the relatively low price of 29 bucks, I ordered the two-part sat just... Front and rear, I'm just running the rear, obviously. It was really stiff when I got it. A um, little bit of mill spec oil, and it is now fine. I mean, I couldn't even push this button in when I picked up the unit. It was, it was bad. Um, charging handle is a black label, I'm going to guess, unit that came on another rifle I traded for. Seems like a cheapy unit. It's lasted over a thousand rounds on three different guns. This is its final home. I'll run it till it dies, or I die, I guess. Um, I would definitely go with a better brand myself. I was going to buy one, but it works just fine. The Bolt Carrier Group, sorry, I got a cold. The Bolt Carrier Group is Nickel Boron. It's an AM Surplus. I got that for 80 bucks off a of fellow on arms list who was looking to let it go. Knew it was still a little baggy, and I'm not mad about that at all. The 
whole upper end point of fact sends the charging handle of BCG I got for 250 with the SB brace off of arms list as well. It's just a standard oh, Palmetto 10.5. It had some shitty cheesy plastic cheese grater that I took off and I didn't even want to like, try to trade it or give it. I threw it in the fucking garbage because that's where it belonged. What the fuck? But other than that, it's a lot of standard controls. I have the PSA EPT mil spec trigger and hammer. Once again, we're going to confirm the weapon is cleared. Sorry, I'm doing it all goofy. I don't want to flag the wife's cat either. But it is a really awesome trigger for a mil spec unit. Um, I can't speak highly enough about it. I mean, I'm going to try out a two stage from ALG and a few other two stages in the future, I think, but for what it is, it's uh, it's kind of becoming my go-to. I like it a lot. And I was weaned on mil spec triggers. It was the first time I ever shot an AR with a mil spec trigger, so I'm probably missing out on some really nice shit from Geisley and company. And I will eventually try to occupy that world. I'm actually pricing out a higher spec 300 blackout build that I'm going to use as a suppressor host. But stay tuned for that shit show. Other than that, it came with the SBA3 brace. I'm now looking at getting the SBA4 as well. I love this unit. It is... I don't really care for this little part so much, but it, its shoulder is really nice. And I, I've got no complaints. I usually keep it fully extended because I've got a fucking long, weird body and I'm a freak of nature. Other than that, it's got the VTAC sling. I've had this for, I think, seven years. Uh, I went with a padded unit. I probably should discount with the unpadded. It's not really needed. Uh, it's a fantastic unit. I run it all the time. I also have the Vickers tactical sling, and I have the comparable, not comparable, really, Magpul sling is adjustable, and no contest, hands down, the VTAC is the way to go for your money. Don't skimp on slings, don't run one points, I know, because I fucking hit myself square in the beanbag with a CCO attached to an M4 at my first fucking field exercise <laughs> after my squad leader dubiously looked at my fucking 1999 Wonder Sling brought to you by Amazon. That thing went to the trash, and I uh, I bought the VTAC and have not looked back. We're going to move on from this one. Let me find a spot to put it without disturbing doggos. To this unit. And this is kind of my go-to home defense PDW build. I, I can't say enough cool things about it. I've loved running this gun. I got it as a trade for a Glock that I got for 400 bucks. It was a 23, and I just didn't ever shoot it because I got out of 40 cal about two and a half years ago. I, pretty much all I ran back in the day because conventional wisdom said 9 millimeters would bounce off of your enemies. I'm going to take a sip of coffee. Excuse me. I work nights right now. I'm trying to remedy that. And I have to stay up on Sunday nights to get ready for Monday evening. It, it fucking sucks. But I had some really good interviews recently with an emerging tech company. And I'll probably be going there. More money, more problems. But it also has a Cobra Tech can. This is the Slim Two-Piece Banshee. I love it. It is also great. I've only run it with this once now. It was just like two mags just to confirm it worked. <laughs> It dropped right in because um, I was lazy. I didn't want to. <laughs> I didn't want to take the whole handguard off. What I did is I got a screwdriver to the ports of the unit that was on here, twisted that off, and then I literally wrapped this in blue tape and took a crescent wrench and cranked her on, and she went right on. A little, little bit of the finish came off. These are not the best finished units. They are machined out of CMV steel. I want to say forty one forty. Um, this also does a great job of taming the beast that is a sub 10 inch barrel with a pistol like gas system. The rail is a Matrix Arms Charlie handguard. Um, I have no complaints. It has been rock solid. 
through the five or so hundred rounds I've put through this thing since I picked it up. Front and rear sight are UTG slim fixed sights. I dig them. I mean, I might upgrade later on. I got them on a sale and they've been pretty solid. Say hi to Charlie, everyone. Charlie's a new addition to the family. One day I'll own all the dogs. This is Kira, and somewhere that way is a cat, and I think my old boy, my farm mutt, is upstairs guarding the wife outside the door. But anyway, Charlie wanted to be part of the video, and he is from No Dog Left Behind Rescue. Great organization, great people. Moving on, it has a angled foregrip that just came with it. I cannot see a brand name on it anywhere, but I have uh, I've been impressed, and I've loved it. It is awesome as fuck. I like to run my finger up here because I got bigger hands and then I use it to pull it back into my body and I usually index my thumb right here and boom. I won't be buying one of the Fiachi units or Fiachi lights like on the other rifle and pistol and putting it up front moving the sight back and I'll be just running it with the bare bones tail cap. This is going to be the Picatinny unit. It's about four or five bucks cheaper because it doesn't come with the cool guy mount. I'm running Midwest Industries covers here because this was digging into my hands and I'm a big fucking sissy. I don't like to be uncomfortable, now you all know it. And this, this right here and here have really, really improved the comfort shootability and the whole flow of the rifle. Pistol. ATF, please don't break into my home. It's a pistol, I promise you. I bought it for pistol -y things. Um, moving on, it's got the very awesome AT3 Tactical Red Dot Sight, RD50. I like this unit a lot. Uh, it is definitely my go-to, like, cheapy one. You can usually find the, the return ones that are new in box, but their returns are about 50 to 40 bucks. They're, they're cheaper than you're going to pay on the Amazon site or their own web store. And that's what this one is. It's on a UTG lower third co-witness mount that I have installed and I love it. I like the lower third co-witness just because I've got a long ass neck and I don't just scooch down like this. Um, on a bigger optic like an aim point, a CCO, PRO, that works great. Um, I do like micros a lot though. They, especially on a smaller gun, they just kind of work with the flow and they're obtrusive and they don't add a lot of weight and one of the worst things I think we've ever done is take pretty light, handy guns and throw a ton of weight on them. And that's why I try to keep a lot of my rifles pretty minimalist and pistols, pistols, ATF. Um, it came with this goofy dust cover and I keep meaning to fucking replace it. I forgot to show you guys it was unloaded. I apologize. I'm sure I'll see it in the comments. Um, once again, standard BCG from PSA. Standard charging handle. So the sights are cool. It's got nothing to write home. It's got an A2 grip right now. I'm actually going to probably get another 45 degree grip. There's a Hogue on this. I've been looking at the Umbrella Corpse or the Ergo unit to run because I want to test out different grips and pick out my favorite. And figure maybe it'll help you guys out who don't have the money to go spend on four to five or eight or ten different grips. Um, then we're moving back. It's got your standard CAC brace and tube. I really like these units. They're light. Um, I do want to try out the Strike Industries unit and the Prema units that have just come out because they come with cute demounts and they're relatively inexpensive. Once again, I'll keep you posted. I, I cannot say enough good things though about the CAC ones and it's a PSA lower, standard mil spec trigger. I'm actually thinking about, like I said, running an ALG Defense two-stage trigger, and it'll probably go in this unit, and like I said, I, I can't see doing much to this one other than doing the tack light, and I might put in a flip-up rear so I can run a Bushnell magnifier that I've had on a couple of different guns. And once again, this is just a great unit. And um, I love these AT3 tactical sights. They're, they're awesome. I mean, there are a lot of good options for micro red dots under 100 bucks. Some of the people tell you you've got to fucking buy an aim point or an MRO. 
If you, it's not your budget, it's not your budget. It's in my budget and I don't buy them because I'm not tier one or two or even 27. I, I'm a civilian completely now. I don't need shit that'll survive a plane crash. But that said, a lot of these units have been tested by 704 Tactical. And they've been beat to shit. I've seen them drop, shot, kicked. There are a lot of great options for the money. Or not even just for the money, just great options, period. But I'm going to sign off. I hope this was informative. I hope it wasn't too amateurish. It probably was. I will try to do better by you folks in the future. If you like this, like it. If you want to subscribe, subscribe. If you want to tell me I suck and that I should never make another video again, please do so and then go fuck yourself with a condom full of broken glass. Peace.